Hi, I'm Brookhaven Town Councilman Kevin Laval, and I'm joined today by Ann Pellegrino and Legislator Tommy Oratori, and we're here at beautiful Bethel Hobbs Farm. We're here to remind everybody about our upcoming race that we have called Run the Farm Four Mile Challenge. We're raising money for Hobbs Farm. Uh, it's a great community organization that's a not-for-profit that raises over 10,000 pounds of food a year uh, to feed various different organizations throughout the town and the county. Uh, and as a uh, person who runs this farm, uh, you know, can you give us a little background and a little history about the farm and what goes on here? Well, this farm, it's been a farm for over a hundred years. Um, it was in the Hobbs farm family. Um, his dad um, owned it first and then he passed it on to his son, Alfred. And Alfred um, farmed it up until 1996. Okay. And um, then it laid fallow for about um, close to 10 years and um, it be really became a dumping ground and whatever and then a bunch of us in the community got together and restored the farm, brought it back to what Mr. Hobbs wanted it to be um, and we have lots of children's programs and stuff and um, our main cause is to teach uh, people about the importance of eating um, fruits and vegetables and or organically and um, keeping it in a farm, so, you know, sustaining it as a farm and um, feeding those that cannot help feed themselves. Now, it's an amazing thing what you do here. And really, one of the first places that I really got turned on to what was going on here was when I had time working with Legislator Tommy Oratori, uh, working as his chief of staff some years ago. And we, he was always very invested in helping out this farm and doing all these different various programs here. And, uh, you know, a couple years ago, we decided to put together this Run the Farm program. Uh, and uh, to be able to raise money here at Hobbs Farm. Legislator Miratori, you know, how, what does this farm mean to you as being the legislator in this area? It's so important. It's so important to the community. Uh, Anne and her crew over here does a great job. Uh, oh, we heard the 10,000 pounds of produce that's provided to different organizations as well as the public. Uh, we appreciate what they do here. We're hoping that this uh, run this year, August 19th, uh, which happens to be my birthday, so I want everybody yeah. out for my birthday. <laughs> <clears throat> and let's make sure we support the farm. Uh, they support us. It's now our turn to support them. So, Ann, thank you so very much. Of course, this was Kevin's baby. He gives me some credit, but Kevin had the idea. We ran with it, and it's been successful the last, uh, what, four years? It's, it's now this, third this, year. This, this is our third year. year. Okay, so we're moving along well with this. Hopefully, the community, will, the community will come out on August 19th, celebrate my birthday, and celebrate the good things that Hobbs Farm do here. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So please remember to come out on August 19th. Registration starts at 8.30 in the morning. It's a great community event. Uh, and runners from all over Suffolk County, even some run runners from Nassau County come out here and really enjoy what this race is all about and it's for a great cause. So can you give us a little history of how we became, how the Hobbs Farm developed and is what it is today? Okay, well, the, um, James Hobbs moved up from Georgia in 2006 and um, he brought his family up here actually just to work on farms. And then they landed up years later purchasing this land themselves. When he passed away, it, um, his son Alfred Hobbs took over. And um, Alfred Hobbs, everybody knows him as Mr. Hobbs. Mm -hmm. This this property, I, I grew up in Center Reach. This was a working farm. I remember driving past here and seeing him on his, on his tractor all the time um, with a pipe in his mouth. But, um, after Mr. Hobbs farmed it for up until the 90s. And uh, in the 90s he had passed away and he had willed the farm to his church, the AME Bethel Church in Setauket over on Christian Avenue. And um, due to legal complications, the land kind of fell fallow for a while and um, people started using it as a dumping ground and um, we still find uh, bathroom tiles out there and yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> when you road until it, something else comes up. But, um, but it laid like that for a good six years, I would say, at least six years. And then um, a group of us got together and um, we decided to open it, try and open it back up. Um, in the beginning, when I first had the idea, I didn't even know who owned the, the property. When I found out it was a church, I was like, yes! Because <laughs> people wanted to buy this. I, you have no idea how many people wanted to buy the property to, to, for building purposes. And um, when I found out it was a church, that was like, that was, it was a gold mine. So um, I approached them, I asked them, you know, would it be possible to get the farm up and working again and just donate the vegetables to the people that really need it? Um, when I was a single mom years ago, um, I worked two jobs 
and um, there was times where I had to go to food pantries and you get boxed stuff and uh, it's not very much nutrition and um, you know so this is the way that I had a chance to give back the community had a chance to give back something nutritious for the kids the kids are our future they need vitamins no that's so. true how many years you know everything here that you grow here it all gets donated to charity how many pounds of food a year on average do you do um, well, we used, we were up to almost 50,000 pounds. Then last year it dwindled because we had a deer population. But now we're getting the fence put up, like I said. So um, we're shooting for 40, I'm hoping for 50. Oh, that's again. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This all year has been a very good year, so um, I, I have high hopes. And it's an all-volunteer organization. Everything is not-for-profit here. It's amazing. 50,000 tons, uh, fat pounds of food. Yes. by volunteers that come yeah. out here. Amazing, yes. amazing. Yeah. We give away to over 11 different food pantries. Now, Legislative Muratoria, I know having worked for you, I know one of the first things when I got into working with you, we started talking about Hobbs Farm and how it was important to you and how it was important to this district. Can you just give us a little background on how you got involved in this when you became a legislator and the importance of Hobbs Farm? Well, Kevin, you know, you're, you're the champion of this district. You're the champion of this town and you brought it to my attention and told me what was going on here. We came down, we looked, we saw, and I really want to thank you and, and Hobbs Farm for everything you've done. I mean, this is really a jewel, uh, a diamond in, in uh, Center Reach, in the town of Brookhaven, in the county of Suffolk. I mean, what they do here, you just talked about how much food they give away, and we see behind us all the sunflowers and, and all the flowers, and we, we know that the handicapped children come down here, and she has a program for them, and Boy Scouts come in here and do certain projects. It's amazing, you know, your dad just did the whole uh, deal with the, with the fence to protect the, the uh, vegetables from, from the deer. So it's, it's really a community project that everyone loves here in Brookhaven. You know, and, and I say to you, Kevin, you, know, you started off, you've done, you've done many things in your community. You re we really are blessed to have you and Ann here and, and the people here that work, you know, nonprofit, as you said, and volunteers. It's so important. I want to thank them, too. I thank all they've done, and we keep this going as long as we possibly can and God bless you keep up the good work please Andy. well you know what I have to say it's not I can't take all the glory there's a lot of hands oh, that sure. have, have oh, helped sure. here and um, a lot of volunteers without the volunteers this wouldn't be possible but you need a leader you see you need a leader you need someone to start the fire you need someone to keep the fire going you know we started the spark now you have this bonfire going you know and it's going to keep going just got to keep and it so, fanning yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> fanning yeah. One, one of the things that Tom brought up that we had an opportunity to do yesterday uh, was to take, take a walk around the farm and a lot of the programs that are done here. Uh, and it's pretty amazing because it's a diversity of programs that you have. So Ann, here, here we are at Hobbs Farm. You know, we're at your educational area here that yeah, I know you work with local schools. Yes. And everything, you know, give us a little background of what goes on here, how you work with local schools and the kids. Well, some of the plots, we plant different species next to each other um, to when you plant different species together, they kind of benefit each other. So we try and see what works best. And um, then whatever works best, we actually use out in the field. But um, the different schools come, they have ladybug houses in there. They have a little teepee right here. Um, that's a pole bean, actually. And the kids climb underneath and uh, they can actually pull the beans from the inside. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool, they love it. Okay. Is what, what schools do you deal with, generally? Right now, it's mainly Axe Head. Okay. And actually, um, some of the classes from the library actually come too. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And one of the things that I know you're very proud of here uh, at the farm is the handicap accessible farming area. Yes. You know, it's something that I know, you know, past years, the Christopher Reeves Foundation came in here, yes. worked with you on getting a grant. Um, you know, the Boy Scouts have been here to help out. and something I know you're very proud of. Yes. You know, can you give a little background before we walk in here into this uh, beautiful area that you put together? Uh, about A little bit about what how this all came about? Okay, well, a wheelchair garden was always in the play, but somehow it always got put back on the back burner. And then my son was in an accident and mm -hmm. landed up in a wheelchair. And my son was a big part of starting the farm. So we thought taking him out for a fresh stroll would be, you know, a neat idea. But when he came here, he got sunk in the dirt with, the, with his wheelchair. So it was kind of depressing that, you know, he couldn't even come here anymore. So, um, and it made us realize how many places people in wheelchairs really can't go. And um, we always wanted to have the VA home be able to come here, and a lot of them are in wheelchairs. So um, with all of that, we contacted the Christopher Reeve Foundation, and they more than gladly gave us a $15,000 scholarship 
or for a grant actually to build the wheelchair garden. Now it was really impressive. I was here when we started developing this and everything, and it was great to see so many communities came out. Yes. The union, the the, the Stony woodworkers, yeah. Stony Brook University kids, the yeah. Civic was here. Yeah. You know, it was an amazing you thing were to watch. Here, I, was, I was here too. <laughs> in shit, suit and tie. It, it, uh, no, no, no. I wasn't in shit. I had the khakis on. Okay. You know? Okay. <laughs> but but it's it was an amazing thing to see this develop. Yeah. If we walk in right here, I know this this lattice right here. I know was built by the Boy Scouts. Yes. The as, lattice was built by one Boy Scout and then the, um, the flower bed was built by another Boy Scout. It's he planted all of that and built it and yeah. And they've been great in here as we go through here. There's one other area that one of the Boy Scouts helped out yes. with too as we go in. Yes. But just to show everyone on TV what kind of goes on here, the functionality of what, what's here is obviously for people in wheelchairs, it was paved out yes. um, just so it's easier to be able to roll around and what have you. Now, if we walk, actually let's walk right over here and uh, we show kind of behind the scenes of what goes on here. So what, what would happen is somebody uh, in a wheelchair can have the ability to walk, to roll right in here. Right. All of these, if it's, you want to go into it, give a little description. It's waist high. So even people that aren't in wheelchairs that have trouble just walking yeah. are unstable on their feet. It's waist high. They don't have to bend over, even people with um, hurt backs, where it's just kind of level um, for them to be able to work on. Now what's really, really interesting about this is you see the piping that's in there that it yes. waters everything right there. Drip irrigation that, was put in. Yep. So yeah, and this is, you know, all the piping was run down through here, up through the, each each uh, area. Yes. So it's constantly watered. You can see it's starting to look pretty lush here. I see some tomatoes over yep. there. <laughs> um, that's pretty impressive that we have going on there. Yep. So let's take a walk, a little walk down over here. So we have tomatoes here. What else are we tomatoes. growing here? And this over here is kale. Okay. Kale's growing up. We need to harvest this for the food pantry tomorrow. Okay. And then this over here is another Boy Scout project. Oh, okay. What is it? What is this in here? This is a strawberry bed, and we have strawberries growing oh, pretty yeah. much round, round the um, the season. Oh, okay. We planted different species in there, so some grow at different times. Mm -hmm. So, and then the big lush things in the back are. Um, Asparagus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what troop is working on this? Do you remember what troop it was? Billy Coljack. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Very nice. But they've been a big part of this. I know one of the other things, if we look over here. That's another. This is another Boy Scout project oh, here where. This actually this, comes this, out. This, so, this is also handicap accessible uh, picnic tables. So, they, uh, you know, somebody in a wheelchair could roll right up, sit with everybody here. Uh, this was done by uh, about two years ago. Yeah. Um, you know, they donate all their time. They put together all these benches, went out, got all the supplies and everything like that. It was yeah. very nice that when we open this, when you open this up, this was one of the things that would have, ha excuse me, would that happen here? Yes. So very yes. interesting to say the least. And but, then the local carpenters union came and built the um, pergola because a lot of people in wheelchairs are on different medications mm -hmm. and they can't be in the sun that long. So we yeah. gave them a shady place to to be able, be able to, to sit, sit and relax. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All right. Now joined by Peter Castorano, who is uh, one of the caretakers here at the farm. Right. We're uh, you know Ann and I have been walking around just showing some different areas. Now we're getting out into really the main fields that are going on out here. So what exactly are we uh, growing this year? And we'll take a walk and go through everything. Well, we started off with the winter crop: collard greens, red cabbage, okay. green cabbage, kale. Okay. Swiss chard. Okay. And we come over here on this side. We yeah. got pumpkins. We got butternut squash, spaghetti squash. Okay. And then we start off with the corn. Everybody's favorite. We got the corn. <laughs> so the pumpkins, are this is going to be for Halloween? This is uh, 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 going to be earlier? Or is it, how long does it take just to, uh, for them to grow? Those take the longest, yeah. but they're actually cooking pumpkins. Oh, okay. So, yeah, uh, so okay, I'm gonna have to talk that. to my mom and get some of this <laughs> little pumpkin pie. I'm pumpkin yeah. pie, yeah. Partial of that. Yeah. Now the corn is the biggest hottest, that, hottest thing that everybody likes here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we we can't grow enough of. Yeah. Um, yeah. People 
the volunteers and even us, yeah. <laughs> we go right in there, pick it off the husk, and just eat it right there. We're not even cooking it. It's really, like, right? Eat it raw. Yeah. Eat it raw. Yeah. 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 Uh, I've, I've heard about Hampton's tomatoes, but we're talking center each corn. And I, you center know, that's each a little, corn. you know, that's it's, you know, that's, that's the big when thing it's that he's the talking sweetest. about. When you okay. pick it off there, that's when it's the sweetest. Yeah. Okay. Every day it stays in the supermarket, it gets less sweet yeah. and more starchy. Okay. Yeah. So we pick it on, we eat it here. Okay. How long does it take for this to grow, corn, generally? Months? Um, a couple of months. Couple yeah. months okay. yeah. yeah, a couple yeah. of months. Okay. Yeah. We actually have another um, crop growing Coming. down there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Second crop. Oh, and I think we're going to have to start adding on more crop of yeah. corn yeah. because it just goes.